If you're deep enough into the world of microphones that you're getting an inline gain booster, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to compare five different gain boosters to help you decide which one might work best for you. Inline gain boosters do exactly what they sound like and increase the volume of your microphone before it ever hits your audio interface. Some of them are meant to be completely transparent, introducing as little noise and character to your audio as possible. Others are designed specifically to add some extra warmth or color to your raw audio. A a perfect candidate for an inline gain booster is something like the Shure SM7B, which is one of the most popular microphones out there, but it's also notoriously gain hungry. For a long time, it was pretty much assumed that if you picked up this mic, you also had to buy an inline gain booster. It's such a common occurrence that Shure released the SM7DB, which is essentially the same microphone, just with a built-in gain booster for $100 more. Now, that's a good solution for that specific microphone, but what if you already have an SM7B? or another microphone that could use a little extra oomph. It's important to note that while gain boosters are meant for passive dynamic or ribbon microphones, they do use phantom power to power their internal electronics. They just don't pass that phantom power onto the microphone to keep from damaging anything. Although there are some options for condenser mics too, which I'll get to later in the video. All the audio comparisons you're going to hear in this video have no post-processing apart from maybe some minor audio normalization. This is the Cloudlifter CL1 mic activator, one of the most popular inline gain boosters out there. The CL1 adds 25 decibels of clean gain to any passive dynamic or ribbon microphone. You've been hearing what my voice sounds like without the Cloudlifter CL1. And this is what my voice sounds like with the Cloudlifter CL1. If we compare recordings with and without, the noise floor is identical at around negative 55 to negative 60 decibels, so it seems that their claim of adding gain without introducing noise are indeed true. The CL1 is supposed to be completely transparent, but leave a comment and let me know if you noticed any difference in my voice using the Cloudlifter. The Cloudlifter CL1 retails for around $149, and they also have some other models that support multiple microphones at the same time. This is the Triton Audio Fethead, an inline gain booster that has at least one advantage over other options out there. It gives you 27 decibels of clean gain but does not require any extra XLR cables like most other gain boosters. The Fethead is designed so you can plug it directly into your audio interface or your microphone and still use just one cable, unlike the box style options available. You've been hearing what my voice sounds like without the Triton Audio Fethead, and this is what my voice sounds like with the Triton Audio Fethead. If we compare recordings with and without the Fethead, the noise floor is identical, so it would appear to do what it says by adding gain without adding any extra noise. But again, leave a comment and let me know if you notice any difference in the characteristics of my voice with or without this. The Triton Audio Fethead goes for around $80, so it is one of the least expensive and most portable gain boosters. This is the Samson High Rise, a gain booster with some really useful extra features. The High Rise has a 20 or 30 decibel switchable gain boost, and it also has a 120 Hz low cut filter as well as a high frequency boost. So this one can be either fully transparent or alter your signal a bit. You've been hearing what my voice sounds like without the Samson High Rise. This is what my voice sounds like using the High Rise at the plus 20 decibel setting. This is what my voice sounds like using the High Rise at the plus 30 decibel setting. This is what my voice sounds like using the High Rise at the plus 20 decibel setting with the high frequency boost. And this is what my voice sounds like using the high rise at the plus 20 decibel setting with the 120 hertz low cut filter enabled. At almost every setting, the noise floor remains the same, so it does indeed boost the gain without adding any extra noise. But with the low cut filter enabled, it actually reduces the noise floor by about 5 or 6 decibels. I'm not surprised because a lot of noise that people deal with is in that 120 hertz or lower range. You can either deal with that in post-processing using an equalizer, or you can do it with a hardware filter like this. I prefer to use hardware when I can, but at 120 hertz, it won't make sense for everything. You may want to retain some of those lower frequencies for lower pitched voices or with certain instruments that you're recording. But again, on the high rise, it's totally switchable and it's not permanent, so you kind of get the best of both worlds. There's an obvious difference when I have the low cut or high frequency boost filters enabled, 
But did you notice any difference in my voice with just the gain boost enabled? The Samson High Rise is one of the newest, least expensive, and most flexible options out there at only $68. Now let's move on to the gain boosters that are designed specifically to add some color or character to your audio. This is the launcher from Soyuz Microphones, an inline gain booster meant not only to give you 26 decibels of gain, but to add a vintage analog tone to your sound as well. You've been hearing what my voice sounds like without the launcher, and this is what my voice sounds like with the launcher. What do you think? Do you think it sounds better with or without? Is it giving me a vintage analog sound? Looking at the spectral frequency display in Adobe Audition, what's interesting to me is that the audio with the launcher looks noisier, but it's actually two or three decibels quieter, and that's because of the slight low cut filter that it creates. So it's obviously boosting or cutting certain frequencies to get its sound, but it does appear to be doing something more on top of that, which makes sense given that it's going for a vintage sound. I'm sure we could do a more technical reverse engineering to find out exactly what's going on, but I'm just here for the practical comparisons. The launcher is well made, highly rated, and goes for around $199. This is the Triton Audio Fethead Transformer, and although it looks almost identical to the regular Fethead, it does add some warmth and color to your sound. You've been hearing what my voice sounds like without the Fethead Transformer, and this is what my voice sounds like with the Triton Audio Fethead Transformer. What do you think? Does it sound any warmer, and do you prefer how I sound with or without it? When you think of adding warmth and color to your audio, you might also associate that with added noise. Interestingly, the Fethead Transformer has a 5 or 6 decibel lower noise floor than recording without it, because it appears to have a subtle low cut filter around 90 hertz. To me, the transformer seems to have a more subtle difference that you can almost feel rather than hear audibly. The Fethead transformer costs a little bit more than the regular Fethead at around $100. Triton Audio also makes a few different varieties of the Fethead to enhance your audio in other ways, or even ones that are meant to be used with condenser microphones. So there you have it, five different options for boosting the gain of your microphone, either transparently or while adding some character before you have to do any work in post-processing. But what do you think? Leave a comment and let me know which one you think has the best design, is the best value, or just sounds the best in general. Links are in the description, and if you buy anything at all after clicking my links, that's the best way to support this channel at no extra cost to you. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.